Hey, welcome back to another video for our web application security. In the last video, we, we created some session variables as a login uh, processor. So I'm going to add a little uh, more code to this screen so we can see what's going on in the SQL, in the SQL statements. And then I'm going to um, actually try to break these login processes so we can illegally log in using the um, insecure code that we've created. So let's go to the uh, code editor and add some new things. So I'm looking for process login on secure. Now I'm going to first of all print the actual SQL statement after it's been set here. So I'm going to say echo SQL equals. So that will print the SQL statement on the screen. Then following the result statement I'm going to also print results. So I'm going to use the uh, same process that I used earlier where I used pre and post pre and instead of printing session I'm going to print result. Alright so that will give us a little bit more insight to what's going on on this line because this is the line where the weakness is going to occur in our code. So let's let's just refresh and see what this login looks like now. Okay so here is the results. It says here the SQL request it says select from users where the username equals shad and password equals password. Okay, that's not too surprising. The resulting object has several fields that are of interest to us. The one that's most important is the number of rows. So we know that exactly one user matched shad. What would happen if we didn't use that correct password or name? So I'm going to do shad A and log in. Now you can see the results are that we're looking for username is shad a. In the results down in the next section we find that the number of rows returned was zero. So it's an unsuccessful login and the session variable is reset to an empty value. Alright so here is the weakness is that we can insert SQL commands into one of these input forms and that is where we're going to find the error. Let's switch back into our um, my PHP uh, admin tool and I'm going to the users table and browse. So we can see that we have Shad and Bob as our two users. We're going to go into the section on the tabs called SQL and we're going to do some select statements here to experiment. First of all I'm going to try a select and we're going to do ID username password from users where I'm going to write a new, a new statement. So we're going to say where uh, username equals shad and password equals password. All right, so this statement should be successful. I'm going to check the box that says retain query box and click go. That allows me to see that this stays here and it tells me how many users were selected. So it says there were one row total and here's the guy. So far so good. Now if I were able for some reason to be able to insert some new stuff into the uh, SQL line, I could probably break in and illegally log in. Watch what happens. Let's say I take the username and I put in XXX. Go. I get zero results. So that would result in a non-authorized user. However, if I were to sneak in something like OR, and I were to put in an OR like uh, true, that's a Boolean value, and go. Now look at the results. It says, give me all users with the name X or true, and the password equals password. So even though I never pronounced or never wrote the word shad up here, it comes out as a result. Hmm, there's a weakness. We could also write true as a statement like one equals one. That's also true. So that Boolean expression comes out to result in uh, one line searched. I could also decide if I want to compare the number one with a string one, which is going to be important later, and go. And that results in one person being found. Now what would happen if I just said I don't care about X's, I'm just going to have blank, password equals blank, and then also search another OR. 1 equals string 1. Go. Now I get two results. It shows me everybody in the database. Shad and Bob both match 
because their password and username are empty strings or they are one equal one. So this here is what we're going to try to duplicate with our application. So let's go back into the login form. Okay, so here am I trying to log in. Now I type in something like a apostrophe and you can see that I've done this before. I'm going to type in or one equals one. I'm going to copy and paste this exact thing in the password and click login. What happened? It gave me a login success even though I had not put in any username and password. Look at the SQL select statement. It says, give me everything where username equals double quote or empty string or one equals one. And the same thing with a password. Password equals an empty string or one equals one. The result says two rows are returned, login successful, the session variables are set, and now I've got myself a login. So this is obviously bad. We don't want any users to log in with a blank password or a blank username. Let's try another uh, SQL injection attack that's actually more common. So what I'm going to use next is a, uh, an apostrophe and then a semicolon and then a hyphen hyphen. So what I want to show you first of all is what this uh, syntax means. Uh, let's put a space after that. This is important. So a hyphen hyphen followed by a space and then anything here in password. So I'll just put in some junk letters. So this doesn't work yet, but it will soon. Let's look at the statement that comes out from SQL. So we are searching for username password from users where? And where the username equals blank. And then this here is supposed to be the end of the SQL statement. So just like in many programming languages where you have a semicolon to terminate a line, SQL has its semicolon. So then the double hyphen means that this rest of the line is a comment. And as you know, comments are ignored by processors. And so it doesn't matter really what I put afterwards, a period or apostrophes or junk. It just says I'm going to ignore everything from here on in. So if we know that it is searching for only the username, we could say, hey, I know that there's a username out there called Shad, and uh, I don't know his password, but I am going to just put in a bunch of junk for his password, and then this hopefully will ignore the second part of the SQL statement. So let's try it. There it is. So now it says, show um, all users that are named Shad, and don't pay any attention to the rest of this, which is his password and look at their login. It is a success. So imagine if you had a username called admin and it had all admin rights to your application, this SQL injection attack would work just fine. So now I go in there and I try to add a joke. So let's say I put in a, a rude joke. Do you want to hear a joke? And then the answer is your life. Let's see what happens when I add now. So look at here. It says this uh, lame joke was submitted by user number one. So user number one's logged in. Poor Shad, he is now uh, the owner of this joke. So those are some examples of some SQL injection. We are going to also work with the uh, search input here to do other SQL injections, but at least we got the login part uh, broken, so we have an insecure application. So maybe it's time to fix that.